एस डिजिटल Major funding for nature is provided by the Park Foundation, dedicated to education and quality television. Major corporate support is made possible by Canon, dedicated to preserving the never-ending beauty of nature. Canon know-how lets you capture the wild in photographs and leave it as you found it. Canon know-how. By Ford Motor Company. Again, this holiday season, we'll collect hundreds of thousands of holiday cards so the St. Jude's Ranch for Children can recycle them into new ones. Ford Motor Company, better ideas. And by TIAA Cref, a longtime provider of products and services to support everyone's ever-expanding financial needs. TIAA Cref, ensuring the future for those who shape it. This program was made possible by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. This is Lion Country. Ruaha National Park, Tanzania. Once a year, the lion's sovereignty over this land is tested by a powerful rival coming down from the hills. Buffalo. Massive and well-armed, they are a match for any lion, and every dry season they descend in huge herds in search of water. First, lions must tolerate this invasion. Now the buffalo are strong, but the water that sustains them will eventually desert them, and the balance of power will change. The fate of the buffalo and all the animals here depends on the Ruaha River. It's the only flowing river for a hundred miles. But for most of its course, it's just a rope of sand with the occasional silver thread. The shortage of water means life for the lions. Sooner or later, all animals must come here to drink. And the lions will be waiting for them, looking for signs of weakness, ready to attack at the first opportunity. But these buffalo are veterans of the war with lions. They have battled before and won. Together, they are a formidable force. Even vulnerable calves are safe between one-ton escorts. 
The pride have their own young to think about. The two males and six females guard a litter of three cubs. Despite the strength of the herd, the lions will test the buffalo's defenses. Sentry bulls protect the perimeter. Strong and surprisingly agile, they can easily repel a big cat assault. If they turn on the pride en masse, Buffalo can trample any lion in their path. The pride is well aware of the danger. A buffalo stampede has already left this cub with a broken hip. The mother has waited days for her cub's wound to heal. With an injury this severe, the cub will not be able to keep up with the pride. Finally, the pride must move on. There are other mouths to feed. Alone, the cub has little chance of survival. It's been a month since the last rain. The riverbed is just a memory of water. Under the relentless sun, the midday temperature in the Ruaha rises to over 100 degrees. The pride dozes away in the heat of the day conserving water and energy. But not the adolescents. They see life as one vast game and are oblivious to the danger that awaits them. Their mother knows better. She spotted a band of irascible bulls headed to the riverbed in search of fresh grass. The rocks retain water and promote a constant supply of green shoots. For any lesser prey, this would be its last meal but the buffalo are well equipped to face any challenge. The young lions are tempted, but the bull appears invincible.
He's so confident, he'll even turn his back on his enemy. Powerful and self-assured, the bull can even afford to taunt his old adversaries. This pride of lions has just had a large dose of humility. The bull is secure in knowing he need give way to no one in Ruaha, save one. Elephants are masters of the waterhole. There's a strict etiquette that must be observed. Great gives way to greater. The buffalo's sign of submission gives the young lions new courage. They study the bull's every move waiting for the slightest hint of vulnerability. With the bravado of an adolescent gang, they can't resist the opportunity to test their hunting skills. mother stands back. If they're to learn, they must learn from their mistakes. Sometimes it's hard to say just who's the cat and who's the mouse. As the mother looks on, the stakes get suddenly higher. Lions have paid a price for their boldness. This battle is over, but the war will continue. And the lions have gained valuable experience that may come in handy next time. Still edgy after his brush with the lions, the bull rejoins the bachelor group. These older males have retired from the main breeding herd. With squabbles over females no longer their concern, they focus on matters of comfort, mainly mud. This time of year, mud is everything. Sunblock, coolant, insect repellent. For all manner of creatures, the need for mud and water is the great equalizer. Such wet days are luxurious, but they are numbered. As the dry season wears on, thirst will force friend and foe into dangerous proximity. Pride needs to drink deeply every two or three days, 
and you'd think their reputation would allow them to do so with impunity. But the river attracts all sorts of drinking partners. And sometimes, even one is a crowd. Lions and elephants aren't usually mortal enemies, though lions have been known to kill baby elephants. There's a residual wariness on both sides. No negotiation between a three-ton elephant and a 300-pound lion. Battles must be carefully chosen, and this isn't one. The pride must eat every few days, or they'll be too weak to hunt. Maybe if they lower their sights a little. Warthogs may be small, but they're difficult to catch once they sense danger. Lions rely on ambush. They're sprinters, not distance runners. Meat is the only source of fuel for lions, but a warthog divided among the pride offers little more than a light snack. Though uninvolved in the hunt, it's the male who will take the lion's share. Almost twice the size of the females, he controls the kill. Females will have to wait or catch other prey. In the suffocating noonday heat, an uneasy truce has fallen on the Ruaha. Lions and buffalo are truly intimate enemies. Much of the day they eye each other warily. Usually one lounges while the other grazes. Equally matched, they are locked in a cold war that rarely erupts in violence. But no one can ever fully relax. To the buffalo, lions are a fact of life. Always there, always waiting, always best kept on the defensive. Which is easily done. Buffalo are five times the weight of a lion. They use that weight to push them around. a naive adolescent lingers to test the boundaries. Ah! 
The lions are tired. Normally they would sleep 20 hours a day, but not around buffalo. So they catnap when they can, keeping half an eye out for a potential meal. Impala are constantly on their guard. They stay close to baboons, whose warning cry lets them know when the lions get too close. The baboons benefit from knowing that lions prefer to eat impala, so they're safe as long as the impala are around. For the lions, it's a tempting opportunity, another chance for the adolescents to hone their hunting skills. Lesson one is to sneak up on the prey without being seen. But one youngster lacks the patience. It's a blundering approach, and it spoils the hunt. With no impala around, the yellow baboons now draw all the attention. They're confident up there, but not too confident. Lions can climb trees, but these branches won't hold a 200 pound cat. So the adolescent lion settles for a game of harassment. Time for the pride to move on. Their presence is too well known here. To find fresh hunting ground, lions have been known to travel as far as 30 miles at a time. Though their territory is large, over twice the size of Manhattan, at this time of year the pride will stay close to the river. Where there is water, there will be prey. Daylight reveals a change of circumstance for the Rawaha lions. One female has declined to move off with the rest of the pride. She has a secret. Only a few days old, their eyes are barely open. They're helpless and unable to travel. It'll be at least a month before they can join the rest of the pride. For now, natural camouflage is their best defense. And when they grow up, it'll become their secret weapon. In this landscape, a lion can easily turn to stone. Something is restraining the whole pride. It's a bigger opportunity. A kudu.
camouflage is so good, the pride seems to explode out of the ground. By working together like this, lions can take down a prey more than twice their size. This is evolution at work. The size of their prey is one of the reasons why lions are social animals. If they were solitary, they wouldn't be eating this meal. With a carcass this big, everyone has a place. Lions never know where or when the next meal will come. So when they get the opportunity, they gorge themselves and are capable of devouring over a hundred pounds of meat in a single sitting. Though there are limits. Those that do manage to keep it down must deal with the consequences. Meat is hard to digest. For the next few hours, the lions will be leaden and tired. It's a time to laze around and strengthen family bonds. But they won't be allowed to digest in peace. With the late afternoon comes an unwelcome pest. Flies harass all the mammals at Ruaha. No one is exempt. It's a plague of biblical proportions, against which there is little defense. Ironically, the beasts that just devoured a 400-pound kudu have become food for a fly. <laughs> Flies have needs too. For them, Blood is an endless source of moisture and nutrition. The most infamous of the biting insects here is the tsetse fly, which carries sleeping sickness, a disease that can affect both man and beast. Over time, both lions and buffalo have become immune to the disease, but livestock are not. So the tsetse fly has protected Ruaha from being developed for cattle ranching. Thanks to the flies, lions remain king of this land, but they pay the price. Flies signal the dry season at its very worst. The battle between the intimate enemies is about to intensify. The Ruaha is now hot as a furnace. The slightest motion demands energy and water. Even the thinnest of shade has become gold. The 
buffalo are feeling the stress. They're losing weight and beginning to weaken. As the water holes disappear, the buffalo must journey up to 10 miles a day to drink. Traveling in formation, the weakest members of the herd are well protected. Lions will need to choose their moment carefully. The Pathfinder bull leading the herd suspects the worst. But caution must give way to their great thirst. Banks split up the herd, shredding their usual defense. Buffalo are at greatest risk when they drink, so evolution has left them particularly vigilant. Their open throats can chug down four gallons a day, while nostrils taste the air for danger. Sensitive ears listen for the first sign of trouble. It's just a false alarm from an upstart baboon. But when one buffalo bolts, they all do, responding collectively to the perceived threat. The herd is like one vast organism, and the pressure of lions has molded its form. Females and calves in the center, bulls on the defensive edges, experienced pathfinders leading the way. I heard may look random, but it's highly organized. It's not just the lions and buffalo whose lives are intertwined. The buffalo have also evolved an abiding relationship with a bird, the oxpecker. Oxpeckers can pick off over 7,000 ticks a day, an invaluable and very personal service. In return, they offer the buffalo a bird's eye view of approaching danger. The lions have locked onto something. Few bachelors have ventured from the safety of the herd and come down to the water to graze. The oxpeckers are on guard duty. The birds do their part, but the bull is slow to react. He's lost valuable time, but he's fast. The tailless bull he's overtaking, though, is about to be singled out. To stop the lions from getting a firm anchor hold on his back, the bull must keep turned towards them, outface them. The lions must honor his saber horns, which could unzip them in a blink. This bull has battled with lions before and escaped with his life, but not his tail.
Experience has won him another narrow escape. For their part, the lions must be patient. There's never such a thing as an easy meal, and buffalo are the hardest meal of all. Miles away, the pride young mother has problems of her own. Wild dogs are in the area. It's a pre-hunt ritual for them, pumping themselves up for a kill. And they're being tailed by hyenas, hungry for scraps. Dogs and hyenas are a threat. If the cubs are discovered, they'd most likely be killed. She must move the cubs every few days or their scent will give them away. One by one, she can carry them up to half a mile at a time. Slowly, she's moving closer to the rest of her pride, on the banks of the disappearing river. The drought has concentrated several herds around the remaining water. With no luck against buffalo, perhaps there's an alternative. Zebra may be fleet of foot, but more to the point, they have no horns. It's the kind of prey a veteran lioness can try for alone. solo takedown, and death from asphyxiation, a clamp on the windpipe. The prowess of this huntress is a great asset to the pride. Most hunts come up empty. Lions can, and do, starve. For all their reputation, lions eat a subsistence diet. In the wild, there are no fat lions. while the pride sleep off their meal. Back at their new den, the cubs are just starting theirs. The needs of these growing predators put an extra strain on their mother. Nature must perform its greatest trick making the next generation so irresistibly cute that adults will do anything for them. Even attack a herd of buffalo. 
Hundreds of buffalo are arriving from all directions to share the last remaining pools of water. There's so little left, they have to drink in shifts. Desperation and competition is fragmenting the group. The herd's defense is breaking down. The more vulnerable females and calves risk becoming exposed. The mother must take advantage of the confusion. She couldn't bring down an adult alone, but if she could isolate a calf, mother has an individual cornered, and backup has arrived just in time. A veteran female from the main pride anchors her down. The claws struggle to find purchase in the tough hide four times as thick as the zebras. Now it's the mother's turn to do her part. If she can get a grip on its sensitive nose, they can control the buffalo. This is the hardest and most dangerous part of the hunt. The horns could be fatal. Bringing down a buffalo is a matter of careful, fearless teamwork. There isn't much time left. The anchor is starting to slip. Buffalo has escaped once again, but with each attempt, the lions edge a little closer to success. Covered with blood and the scent of lions, the cow's return rouses great curiosity in the herd. And none are more curious than the oxpeckers who take advantage of the situation to cash in on their intimate relationship. Although the oxpackers have a field day, the wound will eventually heal under the drying African sun. Veteran buffalo carry ample evidence of their violent tangles with lions. As they get older, buffalo may even lose their horns. But no armor can protect them from their most insidious foe, drought. The grass is gone, the water nearly so. For every creature, great and small, the journey to the remaining water holes has become a relentless pilgrimage. But the remaining pools are so muddy and foul, the elephants scorn them. They prefer to dig down below the sand where the water is naturally filtered.
the whole of nature seems to be barely scraping by or at each other's throats. While most animals are fighting for their lives, the lions are prospering. It's time for the mother to take her cubs to meet the rest of the pride. At six weeks, they're just old enough and strong enough to keep up with the group. How will three new mouths to feed be received by the pride, especially the dominant male? If they weren't his, the male would already have killed them. Instead, they've got his blessing. He'll defend them with his life. Now the cubs are certain to be accepted by the rest of the pride. Joining the pride marks the young cub's greatest rite of passage, the shift from mother's milk to fresh meat. Following the pride onto the kills, they'll begin to learn the valuable lessons of survival. After the mother's solitary burden of caring for her cubs, the pride will now share the responsibility. But it won't be easy. Not only are there more mouths to feed, the best season for killing big game is nearly over. The rains are soon to come, and the great herds will be free to leave the banks of the Ruaha. Introductions over, the cubs are taken to a safe location while the pride prepare for battle. This could be their last chance. hold is secure. It's up to the mother to try to get hold of the head and control the dangerous horns.
if she can find the strength to hold on, it will be just a matter of time before the buffalo yields to its foe. With a twist of the head, the windpipe is sealed. The arrival of the male signifies victory. The lions have finally triumphed. Pride arrives to share in the spoils, but the hunters will need to regain their strength before they can join the feast. It's the biggest meal in months, but it's the first and last taste of buffalo this season. The buffalo sense the coming rains and begin to disperse. The deadly season is over. The weakened herd can escape from the river and its lions. It's the need for water that drove these enemies together and the return of water that allows them to part. Water is the real master of this land. Buffalo will soon gorge on the sweet grasses of the high plains. When they return, the lions will be waiting. The cubs will then be adolescents, and the adolescents experienced hunters. Like generations before them, and generations to come, they are destined to clash in the age-old battle between intimate enemies. To learn more about what you've seen on this nature program, visit PBS online at pbs.org or America Online keyword PBS. Next time on Nature, it's a garden party of unexpected guests. Step into the secret world of your own backyard and discover it's not really yours at all. This nature program is available on home video cassette for $19.95 plus $4.95 shipping. To order, call 1-800-336-1917 or write to the address on your screen. Major funding for nature is provided by the Park Foundation. Dedicated to education and quality television. Major corporate support is made possible by Canon. Dedicated to preserving the never-ending beauty of nature. Canon know-how lets you capture the wild in photographs and leave it as you found it. Canon know-how. By Ford Motor Company. Again this holiday season, we'll collect hundreds of thousands of holiday cards so the St. Jude's Ranch for Children can recycle them into new ones. Ford Motor Company. Better ideas. And by TIAA Cref, a longtime provider of products and services to support everyone's ever-expanding financial needs. TIAA Cref, ensuring the future for those who shape it. This program was made possible by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you.
Thanks. Thanks.